Today, I'm gonna to be going over three unexpected ways to find a civil engineering internship or job during the coronavirus pandemic. This is for civil engineering students or civil engineering graduates or even civil engineers that are currently looking for positions during these difficult times. And these are ways that are unconventional. I don't see them being done too often, especially with students do on the job search. And I've applied these methods during my career uh, in some way or some form and some of these things that I would do now if I was uh, looking for a job during this time. Hi, I'm Matt Picardle and I'm a licensed civil engineer in the California area specializing in structural engineering. So quick disclaimer, you know, I'm not a career coach or a consultant. These are just my experiences that I've seen in the industry, you know, being a student looking for a job and then being on the other side as a professional looking to recruit uh, new interns or graduate level students. So make sure this applies to you and your situation. Let's jump into today's content. Number one is to target small companies that don't have advertisements. What do I mean by this? A typical student will typically go to uh, career fairs or job fairs or information sessions held by these mid to large size firms. They send their resumes there, they go talk to them, and they don't hear anything back. And then they're discouraged, they say no one's hiring, I can't get a job. They go on the job boards, like on LinkedIn, or on monster.com, or indeed.com, they Google search, send their resumes to those companies, and again, they don't hear anything back, they get discouraged, and they say they can't get a job. I was the same way, especially looking for my first internships, I couldn't find anything, and I had to find other more creative ways to go about it. Again, I didn't have an awesome GPA or previous experience, so I needed to find ways to get around that. What I ended up doing was targeting the smaller companies, the local firms. These were the one, five, 10 man firms that didn't have the budget or the resources or the time to hire a hiring manager or even just post positions that they needed to hire because as a business owner, that's time, that's money that they sometimes don't have because they're buried in work and they don't have the personnel. And that's why you don't hear about them on the job boards because they're not posting there. So why does this work? It works because for all those big companies that you hear about in your industry, for example, in civil engineering, there's AECOM, there's HDR, there's ARUP, there's, you, you know the big companies in civil engineering because they have the budget to, to market to students. And that's what all their students apply to. They think these are the companies that they should apply to. And absolutely, they should absolutely apply to those, those large, those mid-sized firms. But they can't just rely on those because if you're hearing about it, you can bet a thousand other people are hearing about those positions also. And if there's only one position, it doesn't matter how good your resume is, one out of a thousand people, it's still gonna be a very low chance that you're gonna get that position. And you're competing with hundreds, if not thousands of other people. That's why you often don't hear from those firms because there's a lot of applicants. So what did I do and what should you do? I had to find ways to find these small local companies. And for me, I pretty much just did a Google search on local structural civil engineering companies. Sometimes they didn't even have websites, they just had an email address or a phone number. But the good thing was once I got their email or their website, I could get in contact, send an email directly to the decision maker. Oftentimes the business owner themselves or someone in the higher up positions that can actually make a decision. This is preferable to the bigger firms where they have a whole HR system in place and the person that you're talking to maybe at the career fair may not even be the person that's gonna be making the decision. So find these small to mid-sized firms where you can get in direct contact with the decision makers. So how do you find these firms? I've already mentioned one, website searches. Search local engineering firms around your area. And you'll find that they won't even have positions open. They don't have openings because they don't have the resources to. So you come in and you're gonna be their savior. You're gonna be the person that offers them help when they need help. And you're saving them money because they don't have to post all those advertisements and go look for and hire a new intern or a graduate or at engineering level position. And that's great because you're gonna be the only candidate applying for that position. They're gonna make a position for you. And when I did this years ago, I sent about 30 to 40 resumes and I got about three interviews out of that, which is actually a pretty good ratio. Three interviews, but I only needed one and I got that one that got me my first structural engineering internship. And that led to more internships and eventually a full-time position. 
Nowadays, you can look up alumni on LinkedIn and see if they're working in your industry and what companies they're working for or you can pull up a list from the university if they have it provided for you. Other ways include event sponsorships. If you go to a professional organization, such as in civil engineering, if they're hosting events, oftentimes there's sponsors at the bottom, which are usually engineering firms. You can also pick up a professional magazine. Uh, for example, in civil engineering, there's a civil engineering magazine that you can go through. They have job listings there too. And sometimes they have small firms that are in those ads. Another way is career fairs, which is really effective, but it's kind of been virtual now, but it's still effective, especially if you're going to a firm where you know you're talking to a decision maker. You can also go to trade shows and their websites, oftentimes where these are vendors or companies that have booths during uh, big exhibits, engineering conventions, and there's usually a big list of them. Another way is using LinkedIn uh, job boards, but more specifically joining groups in LinkedIn. For example, you can join a civil engineering group on LinkedIn. There's a bunch of professionals probably in that group and you can look up what firms that they work for. A lot of them you probably never heard of. You can get in contact with them and then even ask them about other companies that they know about in the area. You can also Google top 100, top 1000 growing engineering firms. Those companies, since they're growing, they'll typically be hiring, but they're not that well known yet. And if you're a student, try to get in contact with young professionals, especially in professional organizations. For example, there's ASCE, they have a younger members group, younger members forum, where young professionals such as myself, we actually have a mentorship program and these students, they get to talk directly with young professionals. And last but not least, look for websites that specialize in finding these types of firms. Homeowners or developers, they're often looking for contractors, engineers, architects, and there's websites such as angieslist.com, homeadvisor.com, bluebook.com, and even yellowpages.com. There is a lot of ways to find these companies, but you have to do some work. But this significantly increases your chances because you're not gonna be competing with 10, 20, 50, 100 other applicants for these positions. Not many people know about these firms, so the odds are in your favor. If you found that helpful, I'm planning on making a career guide to go more in depth on that, more of the step-by-step, -step, more of the tactics, especially on how I found industries in the structural engineering industry, how I separated those career paths, maybe include some resume, cover letter, email templates that I've used, but I need to know if you even want that because I'm not gonna make it if no one wants it. So if that is something that you're interested in and that you want me to make, I've included a link in the description below. Put your email in and that'll give me a list of people that are interested. So when it does come out, you can be the first ones to know that it's released. And if you have questions related to job searching or any of this stuff, please put them in the comments below so I can address them either in the comments or in this guide. Number two is informational interviews. I actually did this when I was a student and I didn't really know anybody in the industry. And I've actually used it to find one of my mentors, especially when I was young, to get, get me in graduate school and transition into the workforce and internships. But you can also use this method to increase your chances of getting that job and being put into that recruiting process. The main goal of the informational interview is to be more than just a piece of paper, more than just your resume. What's the general strategy of this? It's basically to find alumni in your network, particularly LinkedIn or the other methods that were shown in number one, and message and email them, basically asking for a career advice. They could go like, hey, I'm a junior at XYZ University. I noticed that you went there too and that you're in the structural engineering industry. I know you're extremely busy right now, but would you have maybe five to 10 minutes to get on a Zoom call for an informational interview? I just wanna know what the industry is like, how you got into it, and how the recruiting process is. Notice that we're not asking for a job. Don't do that. You wanna build a relationship first. You want them to get to know you a little bit. And in return, you get to learn more about the industry and maybe even get into their recruiting process. Why does this work? It's basically the same principle as going to a career fair. If a decision maker is there and you're talking to that decision maker, they might be the principal or a manager that, that they actually have a decision in reviewing the resumes. They can put a face, 
a personality to that resume. That's how I got my second structural engineering internship going to a career fair and talking to one of the decision makers. I made a good first impression one on one and they, you know, they remind they remembered me and they brought me in for an interview because of how I presented myself at the career fair. Now obviously there's a pandemic going on and you can't go to a career fair. So this is the next best thing. And everyone's stuck at home, so a Zoom call is pretty easy to say yes to. Again, out of the hundreds of resumes that these people are going through, you need to do what you can to stand out to leave an impression. And if we want to break it down maybe step by step, we can go with step one. Find these alumni on LinkedIn and send them an email or a message and ask for that informational interview. Now, once you're on the interview, step two, the informational interview, you want to mainly shut up and listen. You know, ask about the firm's recruiting process. That way you get to know if they are one of the decision makers or they know one of the decision makers, or if it's just completely HR and there's a big convoluted process of how your resumes get critiqued and screened. So if you know that, then maybe the informational interview may not be the best thing but at least you get to find out. But if you are talking to one of the decision makers, then you've just increased your chances if you make a good impression. Ask them about when the recruitment process starts, what they look for in candidates, and ask about their career. Ask them how they got there, what was their career path, how they went from the university that you're going to, to where they ended up now, and what the industry's like. What's the day-to-day -day life of what they're doing? And you can also ask them about other firms, other competing firms that they might know of that are hiring also. So you can get a lot of information directly from a professional instead of guessing going on the internet and step three you know update them on where you're at if you think you're qualified maybe just send them your resume if they think you're qualified ask them if maybe they could put you into the recruiting process officially if not if you don't meet the requirements maybe you need to take more classes you know stay in touch with them keep them send check-in emails on the classes that you've taken the projects that you're taking maybe any of the internships that you got so you still have that one-on-one -on -one relationship. Maybe later on after you graduated, you can reach out back to them and they'll probably still remember you. Number three is video resumes and cold emailing. This strategy is mainly gonna work for those small to mid-sized firms where you're getting in contact with the decision maker. If you're dealing with those large firms where they have a large complicated HR department and all that, it may not work because they may not even see this. This is pretty much your last resort if you need a job now and you don't have the time to do informational interviews. Informational interviews are pretty good and the preferred way to do it, but sometimes it can it's a longer process to build that relationship. But if you need a job now, cold emails and this video resume thing that I'm gonna be talking about is the way to go. Now, if you did number one and you have your list of firms where you can get in touch with the decision makers, you're going to email them, include your resume, include your cover letter, but you're also going to include a video resume. Yep, that's right, a video resume. You're gonna record yourself and you're gonna include it. Why a video resume? Again, you wanna be more than just a piece of paper. And during this pandemic, when everyone's looking for a job, you do need to stand out some way, somehow. And if you include a video resume, they're most likely going to click it because what engineer sends a video resume? And even if you're just decently good on introducing yourself via video, it's gonna make a strong impression. It's basically going to a career fair and they get a sense of who you all who you are, what your personality is already. You're saving them that time of get, you know, getting on the Zoom call. You don't need to do that. A lot of that info, your personality is already shown through that video. And what's the worst thing that can happen? They may not even watch it and that's fine, but you've already sent them the email and you've already reached out to them. But the best thing that can happen, they like your resume, they like your video resume also. Hey, let's get you in for an actual interview. I think I'm gonna like you. You've already saved them a step. And let's face it, you're gonna have to do it anyways. If you actually go into the interview, you basically have to do a video resume anyways. You know, you gotta explain yourself, who you are, what you're looking for, your skills, and how you can help the company. A picture is worth a thousand words. A video is worth a million words. And to be honest, this isn't something that I did back then when I was still job searching, but it would be something that I would be doing now if I was still a student and I wanted to get that first internship, that first graduate position, or even just looking for a job. And honestly, that's something that I've learned doing these types of videos on YouTube. Just putting yourself on camera, you know, it shows your personality. And again, you're dealing with people. These decision makers, these business owners, they're people too. I actually don't have a professional resume. The only resume I got right now is, 
you know, my student one from years back. But because I've been doing these videos and engineers have seen me, you know, I've actually been invited to interview to, for positions, you know, directly from the decision makers. These aren't the recruiters that go after everybody. These are directly from the managers, the principals, the directors that are asking me if I'm interested in these positions that I didn't even apply for. And a big reason is because of these videos. They already get to know me on a better lever level than just a piece of paper and a resume. And I know a video resume is scary. You've never been on camera. You think you look stupid. You think you sound stupid. Your background's stupid. Everything is stupid. But look, I know you can do it. I learned that public speaking or just speaking in general is a skill. I wasn't born like this. I had to take public speaking classes. I was actually one of the quietest, shyest people that you've probably ever met, you know, back at university and high school. But it wasn't until I found out that, you know, if you just keep practicing, your communication skills, your speaking skills can improve. And it is something that you can learn and that you can do also. So what do you need? What do you do to make a video resume? It's pretty simple. I know you have a phone that takes video. That's pretty much all you need. If you want to get something to improve your video uh, technically, I would actually invest in a lavalier mic. Something like this. They're like 20, $25. I'll put a generic one in the link below, but it's not something that you need. A general rule is people can accept bad video quality, but they can't accept bad audio. So if you wanna improve your video, invest in a 20, $25 mic. But definitely it's not something that you need. Go outside, go near a window, get some good lighting. And the good thing is you can script it. It's not like an interview where you have to prepare for everything. And what goes into the video resume? It's a quick introduction of yourself, the school you went to, the position you're looking for, and tell them how you found them. If they're at a small company, they're probably curious on how you found them because they don't post advertisements. And then tell them why you want to work for their company. Please, please, please do not make a generic video that you just make one and send it to everybody. That's actually gonna hurt you because, you know, they can tell if it's not tailored to them. And that makes a big difference. You're basically giving them spam. The next thing you can go into is tell them why you're different and how you can add value to their company. You're already showing them you're different because you're making a video resume, but this is where you can get into some of your experiences, maybe some of the classes, the past internships or past work experience that you've had that aligns directly with what their company is looking for. And it shouldn't be that long. It should only be, a bit, be about five minutes, if that. Once you're done with your video, upload it on you know one of those programs. It could be youtube.com or loom.com and send it along with your actual resume and cover letter when you reach out to them. And you are gonna stand out because again, no one does it, especially engineers. The worst thing that can happen is they see your video, they don't like you. Well, you just save yourself an interview because if you're gonna act like that during the interview, they probably aren't gonna hire you anyways. If you want more information or you want me to go in depth on any of these topics, put it in the comments below. Maybe I can do a future video on those or maybe include it in a future guide. Again, if you wanna be included in that future guide, put your email in the description below so I know that you're interested and that there's actually a demand for it. Thanks again for watching. I appreciate you and I hope you have a great day, a great career and a great life. I'll see you next time.